Welcome to Holistically Speaking. I'm Hilary Russo, certified holistic health coach and health and wellness journalist. This is an empowering place to explore self-awareness, self-love, and transformation through health, healing, and humor. By sharing life-changing experiences, knowledge, and guests with varied expertise, we'll explore who we are, how we got that way, and what it takes to be a happy and healthy grown-up. Mind, body, and spirit. I'm glad you're here. I remember the first time I did a sound bath. I wasn't sure what to expect. However, the thought of bathing in sound intrigued me. After all, sound has an ancient kinship with meditation and healing. The Aborigines have been using the didgeridoo for over 40,000 years. And the Tibetan and Himalayan singing bowls are ancient practices that go back even further in time. This stuff isn't new, but to me it was, at least on the level I was about to explore. The room looked like a typical meditation setup. Mats spaced out on the floor, the lighting was perfect, and the energy was a mix of excitement and calm as people found their places. I chose a mat close to the front of the room because, well, that's just me creating some distance between myself and the unknown, but inquisitively close enough to see the detail of the gong, the chimes, and some other instruments that faced me. What happened over the next hour was a mix of vibrations and energies I had never felt before, and a deep relaxation that I truly needed after a hectic New York City day. Leslie McDonald was our guide. And while I knew her personally, I put my trust in her when she asked me to be her guest. Boy, am I glad I did, because that sound meditation was only the beginning of many more to come. So who is the gal behind the gong? And how did Leslie find her heart and her soul in sound? You're about to find out. And make sure you stick around until the end for a very special treat from Leslie herself on this episode of Holistically Speaking. What's new and good, my friend? So many things and nothing at all. <laughs> <laughs> well, I would say being a relatively new mommy, yeah. nothing at all could be I haven't done anything or gone anywhere because of the pandemic. And also I haven't done anything and gone anywhere because I'm a new mommy. Yeah. <laughs> I don't Congratulations, what, by the way. Thank you. I actually don't know what time is anymore. I wake up and it's like Groundhog's Day over here. Yeah. But I add that on top of COVID yes. and the pandemic and and uh, just, I mean, everything that you are doing to keep mindful. I mean, that's really all that you're about and all I've known you for about five years now. Yeah. And um, mm -hmm. I've been to a number of your sound meditations mm -hmm. and sound baths and sound salt baths and yeah. so many amazing ways that we can be kind to our mind mm -hmm. to take care of ourselves, be present and just relieve stress and be in the present moment. And when I came across your sound baths and your mm -hmm. sound meditations, I was hooked. And that's what we're talking about today. Mm -hmm. We're talking about how we can put new different, uh, new and older approaches even into our lives to help us find that state of calm. So this is amazing. This is so exciting. And I love sharing and talking about it. And I mean, sound changed my life completely. So I love hearing about other people's experiences, not even just with my sound baths, but like with others, like I just, sound is so powerful and I, I love it. It is. And we hear so many, you know, we don't even think about it when we're in yoga, when we're in meditation, a lot of times they're playing music in the background, the megahertz, they talk about the importance of the different megahertz, but with what you do, and for those who don't know what sound baths are or sound meditation, can you share a little bit about that so we can give people an idea? Yes. So I call them personally, I call them sound meditations because when I say the word sound bath, the idea of sitting in water comes to mind like this bath. And I've had people ask me, what do they wear to these things in terms of getting wet? And I always want to laugh, but then I'm like, oh, you know what? You're being bathed in sound. It makes sense. But to simplify it, I, I call them sound meditations. And so basically it almost sounds like an oxymoron, right? Like a sound and then a meditation. So I think of it as a meditation, which is 
getting in tune with your body, slowing down, being still, but then being bombarded with these sounds that almost wake you up and jolt you and get you thinking and get your body going and getting the energy moving. So it's this energetic meditation. So I tell people, if you want to move around, if you want to sit up and write things down during a sound meditation, that's completely fine. This isn't about being still and quiet. It's about slowing the body down so that you can hear what needs to be said. Mm. And it is such an experience. And, you know, for those who have never been, it, it, the, just the the feeling, the vibrations that go through your body when you're sitting there, because it's not just the music. It's not, well, it is music. You're sitting there with these beautiful instruments, by the way, one of which that gong, which is almost bigger than you are watching you carry that thing around is hilarious, but it's a commitment. But every, every instrument you're using has such purpose, right? Yeah. So the, um, 32 inch gong that I, that you're referring to is crazy. It's I'm five feet and I literally have to lean over to one side to get it lifted up off the ground. Um, and everyone's like, well, why did you get this big one? Like they make smaller ones. And I do, I have a travel size one, but that sound, I mean, that resonated with me and I feel like you're drawn to what you're drawn to. And that 32 inch is what was played during my first sound meditation. And I had to have it. And To this day, it's still my favorite sound. I actually recorded one this weekend and I walked out of my bedroom and I looked at my husband. I was like, man, that was a good one. And he was like, okay, like he didn't get it. But like that sound as I play them still resonates through me and I felt it. And yeah, that gong is powerful. That gong is (laughs) the bomb. It is is amazing. And and then you're, yeah, it is magical. And then you're pairing it with the chimes and, mm-hmm. and these shells and everything that you do is so organic, yet it feels choreographed. Mm-hmm. How does one go about, do you actually plan it or are you going by a feeling while you're well, in there's, there? Yeah, there's two ways that I do them. If I'm recording them just to um, record and play, I kind of plan it a little bit like, okay, I'll start with this and maybe I'll play these symbols on the gong, especially if I'm recording a specific uh, thing, like maybe it's for the solar plexus or for um, concentration or sleeping. Like, yes, I will plan those when I'm in a room with people, which I would love to do post pandemic. um, I let the room kind of speak to me. So it's the energy of the people. And that's what makes the in-person one so special is that it, it's different every single time because the gong is playing what the people need. Um, and sometimes I'll hear like, oh, my God, that specifically was for me. Like, did you did you know what I was feeling or going through? And it's it's all intuitive. Um, but there are symbols that you can play on the gong. Um, so if someone said to me, I'm feeling really anxious and I'm not sleeping at night, there's a way to play these symbols um, and I can go into it if you want, but mm-hmm. it's, yeah. it's basically you could play if someone's not sleeping, right. It might mean that they have too much heat and too much fire in their body and not enough air, not enough slowness and stillness. So I would play the symbol for fire in reverse to release the energy. And then I would play the symbol for air or maybe even water or earth to ground them. And I would play that clockwise to bring that energy in. So there's a it is choreographed. It is choreographed. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I, everyone listening, my goodness, if you have not done a sound meditation, well, specifically with Leslie, and we'll get into that. And I know you have Insight Timer where you're one of the teachers, which is amazing. Mm-hmm. So you offer that. But in person, can I, I am, I cannot wait to be in the room with you. But let's I, go back. I, I need that, like, I need them. Like they, I they, need you. Need <laughs> <laughs> well, let's go back though. How yeah. did you get into this? You mentioned back in 2016 was your first sound healing mm-hmm. sound bath. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and why? Yeah. So I was... Working in a corporate job, um, ironically, it was pharmaceutical advertising, says the holistic person. Um, but I, I was looking for things outside of work to, you know, before I went home, that kind of would air me out. I didn't want to bring work home emotionally or physically. And a friend recommended these sound baths. Um, and I went. And a lot of them are associated with kundalini yoga because at the end of kundalini, meditations, they do play a gong. So 
I was a little weary. I was like, oh, I'm not into Kundalini. I don't meditate. And she was like, this isn't that. You don't need that. Let's just go. And it it was perfect. I You lay down. You don't do anything, right? Like that's literally what it is. You just lay down. So I went to my first one and I was hooked just like you. And I had to go back every Friday night. And it was kind of this perfect way to end the week. Um, I literally just left everything on the floor, like at that event. And um, I kept going and something within me was changing, whether it was the energy of the sound or, you know, mentally I was changing, but I went to one, I felt anxious almost during the sound bath. Um, I felt like there were these hands wrapped around my throat. Something was telling me to speak up and it wasn't in a scary way. It was more like you, you need to voice something. You need to shed something. You need to get something off your chest. And I had realized in that moment that for about a year, I was really unhappy in my job. I had wanted to quit, but I didn't know how. I didn't know what to do. And I sat up from that sound bath and I looked at the teacher and I looked at my friend next to me. I said, I'm quitting my job. And I texted my boss and I said, I'm quitting. Here's my two weeks notice. I'll see you tomorrow. And I felt you quit like, in a text. I quit in a text, but then I still <laughs> went and I was like, we're going to talk. We're, I did it the right way. But I was like, this is it. Um, yeah. And I felt like I had voiced my opinion and whatever was wrapped around my neck or in my chest was gone. You know, that lump in your throat, right? Well, like, it's the throat chakra too. This is your voice. Yeah. yeah. And everyone gets that lump in their throat when something's wrong or they're nervous or they mm -hmm. have to public speak. And I knew something was wrong and I didn't know what it was until that moment. And I quit and uh, that was it. It was Halloween. And then no, two weeks later I was on my own and I was, I had gone to that teacher who was teaching that night on Halloween. And I said, if you're ever teaching anyone how to do these, I would just love to learn. I would love to know the science behind it. And he looked at me and he said, in two weeks, I have a training. And I said, great. In two weeks, I don't have a job. So I'm here. And mm -hmm. that was it. And it was so, um, it was so aligned and it was perfect. Then I bought a gong. I <laughs> didn't know what I was going to do. And I aligned myself with people within the wellness and community. And I said, if you would like to do some events with me, because I didn't think a lot of people knew what sound baths were. And so I almost had to align myself with yoga and do sound baths during Savasana. And that, you know, exposed people. Um, and I think 2016 was kind of the start of what I saw as sound healing emerging. Um, and I don't think before that, I'm sure it was well known, but not something that um, people sought um, as a healing modality. And so, I mean, 2016, if you think about it, like that's when Instagram started opening up and acupuncture became a fad and all these wellness events started happening. And, and I feel like it was like this perfect timing of when people could learn um, and come to these events. So I busted my butt and did events four times a week um, and, and just got myself out there. And it was crazy. And you, you really built your social media. Mm -hmm. I mean, I remember being really impressed. I mean, you and I are both in, uh, graduates of IIN, the Institute for Integrative Nutrition as health coaches. And I was always really empowered by and inspired by the fact that I'm like, wow, you really, you built on that and you were mm -hmm. in it at a really good time. Mm -hmm. So, but you also busted your butt, like you said, you know, and what was the hope of doing that? What were you hoping to accomplish from that like what did you want to leave yeah instagram kind of and i hate saying it fell into my lap because it is a job um but i mm -hmm. think i did i got in at the right time i was sharing healthy recipes i was sharing holistic wellness tips and and so i was able to leverage that for then local events um, and build that community um i don't use it as much now except for like awareness and sharing my daughter on it but mostly because there are no events to be doing. It, it's a harder time right now to be on social media. But, you know, four or five years ago, it was an online community. I was meeting people from all over the world. Um, and I was able to then take the sound meditation out of the community, the in-person community, and create the online one. I was able to share on IGTV. I was able to do recordings for people. So it really expanded my reach. Um, so I did take full advantage of it. But it is 
definitely a job to sit on your phone scrolling all day. It is. And, and that's something that, you know, I even struggle with. It's it's always trying to get content out there, engage with people, which we need to be doing, especially in the work we do. Uh, supporting others is, is being present, but we also need to be mindful of how much time are we focusing on the outside and l- how much time are we avoiding the inside? You know, it is a balance, holistic, right? <laughs> it is. And it's also hard because you want to connect on social media, but you also want to step away from social media and be present. So mm-hmm. yeah, finding that balance was very hard for me. And I think when I had my daughter and when we this pandemic started, I was like, I don't think sitting on my phone right now is healthy. Um, mm-hmm. But I'm able to recognize that and, and use it as a tool now when I want it. Um, and also find pleasure and enjoy and connect with people still. Yeah, I'm sure that your daughter is also a very healthy distraction. <laughs> very good doing distraction. So while you were on this path and while you were you were learning about sound meditation, sound baths, and you quit your job, you were also uh, dealing with some personal personal medical issues. I mean, you mentioned that you mentally you were dealing with panic, panic attacks. Mm -hmm. You also have, um, you also said that it helped you with thyroid healing. And let's talk about that a little bit, because Mm -hmm. how has it helped you holistically in your healing? Yeah, I think when I was at my corporate job, it was the first time I actually had experienced a panic attack. And, um, I don't blame my job. I just, it was not the right environment for me or I wasn't um, feeling in tune with it. As I said, it was pharmaceutical advertising and here I am going down this health coaching route. So I didn't feel like I fit in. I didn't feel fulfilled in my work and I, and I felt it. It was in my chest. It was in my whole body and I was getting sick. And at the same time I was experiencing like actual um, illness with a thyroid disorder And I had mentioned to my doctors that I would love to try to treat it holistically with food as medicine. I was, um, I want to say 23 at the time. Um, I didn't want to be on thyroid pills for the rest of my life. And I can put an asterisk there that says I am now 33 on thyroid pills. So I'm not against them. It's not evil. Please take your thyroid medication. But at the time, I just, I really wanted something else. Um, I think I also was looking for a distraction from work and focusing on food as medicine and fitness and mental health was really an outlet for me. Um, and so my, my doctor was aligned with that. We started a a supplement regimen, a fitness regimen, a food regimen. I completely cut out sugar, gluten, dairy, soy. I mean, you name it, it probably wasn't eating it. Um, and I think it it really did help me heal and then add to that the sound baths and the meditations and the yoga and my whole body was completely aligned. But then you add this little part of work that wasn't fulfilling me and it kind of was this crack in this, you know, in this person and it was starting to chip away at me. And so that's when the panic attack started. And once I I think the sound bath that I went to on Halloween, what it was doing now that I can look back and think about it, but in the moment I had no idea, but I look back and I now see that the the sound was energetically trying to fill this, this crack that my job had in my body and my mind. And it was trying to heal, you know, this, this negativity that I had towards my job. And only when I quit in that moment, did my whole body go back into alignment. Yeah. And I remember you mentioning when we were chatting last time that you wanted your first defense to be n- not to be drugs, mm-hmm. not. So, and like you just said, I mean, there is a place for modern medicine. We should not poo poo modern medicine just because we live in a holistic world and we're yeah, working in holistic health. Mm-hmm. There's a place and time for it. But if we instantly go to the drug first without looking at possibilities, you know, that's food is thy medicine, medicine is thy food, right? We learned that from Hippocrates. So, but you saw a dramatic change in how you were, how you were aligning with mm-hmm. modern medicine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I didn't see the medicine as evil. I saw it as an, um, almost like this last, um, defense that I could use for my body and my body needed more. If I took that pill at that time, my diet wouldn't have changed. I wouldn't have found the holistic tools that my body and mind needed to heal. And the medication itself probably wouldn't have helped as much because my body 
needed more. It needed more than just a tiny little pill. Whereas now I can take that tiny little pill and it's healing because I have all these other tools that I'm using. Right. So like it all, I think there's all, there is a time, there's a place, um, there's a use for it. And I think at such a young age, I had the time to figure it out. And I was, I was working with a doctor and I said, if you, if I get to a point where you think I am so sick that I need medication right now, stop all this. Like, don't let me be crazy and and so gun ho on being holistic that I'm, you know, causing more harm. I don't want this to be harmful. I want this to be helpful. And for six years, I used food as medicine to treat my thyroid and, you know, a lot of my mental health. And it was actually when I got pregnant that I did need to go on medication, but that's because hormones are all over the place and got to do what's best for the baby. But yeah, for a very long time, I was able to use food as medicine. And I felt really good about it. And with the sound meditations, you add that on top of it, you mentioned the, the, the power of noise, then how it crowded out the thoughts that you were having mentally. Can you go into that? What you mean by that? Yeah. So I think again, with meditation, everyone thinks about silence and being still and how long can you meditate for? Can you be silent and still for an hour? And to me, that doesn't work. We live in New York city. There is noise everywhere. We cannot have silence. Like there's noise. Even when we do the sound meditations with yours, I remember we would be upstairs at that one location and you would hear stuff, but it was so easy to drown it out too and focus on the importance of a sound meditation. Right. I remember one time there was like construction outside the window and there were like (laughs) men looking in and I was like, really? And I sat up and I was so embarrassed and I was like, I'm going to have to refund all these people. This was not a good experience. And I was like, was the construction too loud? And they were like, what construction? We didn't hear it. Exactly. It became part of the event and we were able to drown it out. Totally. And I remember this one time where we were at one of the locations and they were like, which always happens in New York. And as a New Yorker, you get used to drowning out sirens and things like that. But there was a mass amount of sirens that went by. And for a moment, it was there. And then I was right back with you. And it was, which is, look, that says something about what you're doing and how, how you do it, because it didn't become the primary to anything. It, It was like, a fleeing thought it was gone and we were back where we needed to be. Even Maybe it was even part of the sound meditation. You never know. I might have done that on purpose. <laughs> but <laughs> so I hope you didn't have a five alarm fire go by. <laughs> I know. But that's the great thing about the sound meditations is you are trying to achieve this stillness of your body by laying down, but you want your mind to still be working. You don't physically want to fall asleep, right? So You want to use the sound to clear out energetic blocks in your mind and body. And then what I say is that whatever sound or thoughts that come up during the sound meditation are what you need to pay attention to. So the fact that there was a siren or construction and you heard it, but then it was gone means you didn't need that sound and that, um, you know, physicality in your body at that time, you needed something else. And the sound was literally drowning it out. So what the gong and the singing bowls and the chimes are doing is it's creating enough noise to drown out what you don't need and what's unnecessary, but still bring forth what you do need. So that's why I kind of say to everyone, bring a piece of paper and a pen with you because you want to remember these thoughts. It's not about forgetting the world around you. It's about paying attention to what you actually need to do. Yeah. And there's a powerful statement that I just heard that Dr. Deepak Chopra mentioned about the power of being in the, that moment in the now when we are in when we are in this moment we are in our actual thoughts we are we we, we can't be stuck we you know we, even when we come right out of meditation that moment or sleep or anything like that we are in the ego has not hit us mm-hmm. so when we kind of awaken even though we're not I mean sometimes I've fallen asleep I've had some people next to me that have been like you were snoring I'm pretty <laughs> like, sure my dad was snoring next to you one time and and probably when it does happen I like this is where it gets choreographed where I'll stand up and I'll be like okay time for a chime and I'll start walking around and I'll kind of like nudge the person a little bit and they'll, they'll snap out of it but <laughs> I'm sure you kicked me a couple times <laughs> no but you know what sometimes what we need is sleep and what we mm-hmm. need is rest and so if someone 
who says like, I haven't slept in days. I've been on a work deadline or I'm anxious or I'm, you know, something's wrong. And you're snoring at a sound meditation. You needed that. And the sound is what helped get you there. So why am I going to wake you up? Yeah. And that moment that we come out of it, right? When you complete it is like the most beautiful moment because everything is so clear. Everything is clear. And that's, that's what I'm going back to about what Deepak says, you know, in that moment of when you've just come open your eyes it's there's nothing there that you you are present and that whole time that you're in this sound meditation or any meditation you do you are absolutely present and it almost reminds me of that that scene in eat pray love and i've referenced this before where she's trying to meditate like crazy she's at the ashram she's swatting flies away everything's bugging her she's bugged by the fact that everybody else is meditating and she cannot be in the zone it's because she's in her head right yeah and and if she had let herself get in her head enough, you know, she could have gotten out of it, right? Like allow those thoughts almost to consume you that you then are like, okay, let go. But when you're thinking about the thought, like she needed something there to crowd out those thoughts and that's where the sound comes in. So right, that's why, and I, that's why I can't meditate in silence. Like it's not possible because then all I want to think about is the sirens outside and the work I have to do and the food that needs to be made and the dishes that have to be done. But if there's sound, you have something to actually focus on, right? Like, And we tend to create the chatter. Mm-hmm. We put that chatter in our head. Yeah. I personally find it very powerful. Like I do love doing meditations and obviously, you know, I'm a certified havening practitioner, which by the way, we should totally collaborate because I, I think it'd be amazing together. So we're putting that out there. Uh, but when I, whenever I'm in the room with people and you and I met in a community setting, Daily Burn, mm-hmm. right? Whenever I'm in the community setting, I gravitate off the energy of others. So what is the importance of community to you? Because I know you want to get back in the room with people. I do. And as an introvert, I'm still craving people. Like this is too introverted for me. I, I need some people. I, I need other people's energy to build mine up. Because at the end of the day, I can, and I just proved it, sit in my apartment for a year without seeing people. And I'm alive and I can tell that story. Does it feel good? No. So I need people to help me and I then in turn can help others. So, you know, sitting alone, needing to reset and needing to catch your breath is wonderful. I am an extroverted introvert. And after all those encounters with people, I go home and I rest. I'm like, oh, that took a lot out of me. But I think doing this for a year, I haven't, I'm reset. Let's go. Like, let's get back in it. I want to talk to people. I want to, you know, feed off of their energy because right now I'm only feeding off of my own and it's yeah. difficult. And you've been, myself. you've been in an apartment with Ryan, your hubby, and your little girl who is nine at this time around nine months, right? She is so, nine and a half months. Like amazing. It's crazy. If you you had a baby during this pandemic. What was yeah. that like? That was hard. And I actually had my second panic attack. Um through the pandemic. Um I felt very alone. Um partners weren't allowed to go to doctor's appointments anymore. Um, New York City was preventing partners from actually going to the hospital for delivery. And they they made that a rule that you had to be alone delivering. And I was scared. And it was my first uh, experience with labor. And I had actually had a miscarriage the year prior. So I have already experienced loss. I've already know that sinking feeling of being alone through a child uh, loss. And I didn't want to do that again. And I felt like no one was helping us. Like, yes, we were helping the collective and the greater good by staying home and staying apart. And I recognize that. And I want to save as many people as we can. But you need support and we need help. And so I remember having a panic attack literally a year ago, like March 19th or 20th, when they said no partners in the hospital during birth. And I was I lost it. I was like, I can't do this. I can't do this alone. I need the community. I need the collective. And then a week later, they signed a rule that, you know, your husband or your partner or your doula can come. And I was, I was okay, but I was not okay. I was feeling anxious and scared. And then to go through literal childbirth 
and your in-laws and your the grandparents can't meet the babies, the brothers and sisters can't meet the baby. I also don't have daycare and childcare, so I am with her 24-7. So where in all that is my mental health? Like, I'm looking out for her. My husband's working 24-7 which from home, which he needs to do to help the family. Where where am I in all of this? Where is the mom? Um, taking a bath or a shower is difficult when I'm literally, my job right now is a stay-at-home mom, which is beautiful. And I am so grateful for the time I have with her that I wouldn't normally have had because maternity leave is so short. So I have now had a year with my daughter that I never would have had. But man, do I need a break <laughs> and and a breath and brunch and a mani pedi and some friends and a hug. Like I need a hug. So yeah, yeah, definitely. Oh, we all need some hugs, right? <laughs> but you've gone through this. It took you a good five or four or five months. You said to kind of get yourself back in check mm -hmm. during this time, and especially this past year. Have you brought sound meditation into the home to where? the husband's participating, you've even introduced it to the little one. I mean, how has that been for you as a family unit and using the power of sound? Oh, that has been my one of my only saving graces. So I was actually put on bed rest during my pregnancy. So my last sound meditation in person pre-pandemic was November 2019. And unfortunately, even before the pandemic, Hit, I had to stop because I was put on bed rest, which was heartbreaking to me. Um, I just, I couldn't do it. And then my mental health was suffering because I was on bed rest and this is still pre pandemic. So I've been in quarantine longer than anybody. Um, I was put on bed rest in December, 2019. And I didn't want to play the gong. I was nervous about, you know, just harming the baby in any way. And I, I, believe wholeheartedly that the sound would have been healing and healthy, but I was stuck in this mental, this spiral of being sorry for myself and feeling down because I couldn't walk, I couldn't go out, I couldn't do anything. And then I gave birth and I was so focused on her that I didn't focus on myself enough. So for the first six months of her life, I kind of ignored the sound baths and I, I kind of forgot all the, the good things that I should do for myself you know, for my own mental health. I was so worried about her. I was so worried about my, my husband. Can he work? Is this a healthy environment for him? Like, can he have his meetings? Um, I, I didn't want him to have to leave the home because I needed help with the baby, but I was not focused on myself and I felt so drained and sad and, but so happy at the same time that I didn't, I didn't understand the mix of emotions. So recently I brought the sound baths back and Harley is obsessed. She doesn't need any toys. She literally walks around with one of my chimes uh, playing it. And when she was about two or three months old, I decided to, she had like an activity center that went over her, you know, on the mat. And I replaced all the baby toys with, with the chimes and she would kick them and play them. So sound has been in our home since she was born. It just, just wasn't me playing it, which is really special. Actually, she's She's done, been doing sound baths herself since she was really little. We have an assistant in the making. I do. And, but now I'm trying to play every week, uh, every week, you know, for my own mental health. I'm trying to just 10 or 15, 20 minutes. It's kind of, you have to think of it like fitness. It's fitness for your mind and your body, not just physical, but mental. So absolutely. So if my husband can take 20 minutes and go for a two mile run, then I can take 15 minutes and do a sound bath and it doesn't have to be for anyone. It's, it's my own. So, mm. yeah. Mm. So you are also, as I mentioned earlier, you have meditations that are available on insight timer. I do. Yeah. It's really exciting. Uh, yeah. So people, until we are open or, you know, if those who don't live in the New York area, once mm -hmm. the world opens and they're able to come to a Leslie McDonald sound bath, this is a really awesome opportunity for people to get a taste of what, Leslie is like in these sound meditations because it is so powerful, girl. It really is. I, I I love listening to it, but I cannot tell you how excited I will be when I can just bust downtown and you will be the first person to know when I have a space and a date and a time. Better. Oh, it would be so good. But Insight Timer has been really great because. I didn't want to build an app and a forum to share my sound baths. And, you know, Instagram is a great social media tool, but 
and you have to be on social media to hear them. So I wanted something that you can turn your phone off but still listen to. And I use Insight Timer for meditations, and I know many people do. And so I was invited as a teacher to upload my sound baths. And so I'm trying to do them weekly. I'm doing the full chakra. I'm doing full moon, new moon, kind of whatever comes to me. So I guess it's my own inner healing because I'm using myself as the community that you know, needs the sound meditation and whoever resonates them with them will find them. Oh, amazing. Amazing. And I didn't know that before we were able to chit chat. Uh, we hadn't talked in a while. So knowing that just brings me so much joy because now I have Leslie when I need her. Right. There's you know? a way to listen yeah. to them. I yeah. always sent my sound meditations out after the event, but now there's no event. Yeah. So, oh yeah. I brought some friends them. with I brought friends with me to your sound baths and the sound meditations. And the so first thing they ask is, where do I get this? Like, can, can I get a copy of this? I mean, to, to be wanted even afterwards says something about the power of, of how it feels and how you feel. And, and just, oh boy, that salt bath one was awesome. Those are my I, favorite I have, because I don't know if any, you know, for anyone who hasn't been to a salt room, it is an entire room made of pink Himalayan salt. And what it does is it opens your lungs and your chest and helps you breathe. So you couple the salt with the sound and you are breathing like the best that you have ever breathed before. Your breath is so natural and your body is able to literally heal. Like you are in the most parasympathetic like state of being that you can ever be in. Like you are full on healing, like your entire mm -hmm. body. Yeah. Uh, I just, I still have memories of that. And just the feeling that your body's tingling, you're detoxifying yourself mentally, spiritually, and physically. Mm -hmm. And you put all of that together. And isn't that what it's all about? I mean, that is holistic health right there, right? It really is. It's, it's the full body healing. It's, mm -hmm. it's, and it's also not just one modality, like sound is great, <laughs> but yeah. so is stretching. So is salt. So is you know, eating right and exercising. So I also loved when we did yoga in the beginning mm -hmm. because you're moving so fast, your heart rate is so up, you're sweating, you're detoxing, literally dripping in sweat. And then you sit down and you lay down and your heart rate has to come down. And to aid in that, you have the sound, which literally brings your heart rate down and brings your pulse down. And and to pair that with the with the physical exercise is so powerful. Mm. So beautiful. So I want to play a little game with you. Uh-oh. <laughs> All right. We're going to do a little uh, word association. And while we're talking, I love grabbing some words that Leslie has shared. And I write them down. And I just want you to think of the first word that comes to mind. Okay. You need a moment? Okay. I always ask people, do you need a moment? They're like, we're ready. Let's do it. <laughs> oh, no. I'm scared right. of what I said. <laughs> no. Just like be in the moment. You're good. Here we go. One word. Just come back with one word, okay? Okay. Healing. Hard. Energy. Beautiful. Gong. Powerful. Anxiety. Scary. Chimes. Euphoric. Holistic. Uh, wow. <laughs> um, holistic. I'm not even thinking too hard about it. That's just a, wow. I think, um, hard again. It's, yeah, it's hard. Mommy. New. And also hard. <laughs> and also really hard. <laughs> and last word, community. Special. Yeah. It is special. Yeah. You're special. Mm -hmm. And I'm so glad that we had a community that brought us together because, you know, it, 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 within the health and wellness world, I mean, it's so beautiful when you align with people. That's my word of the year align. And mm -hmm. I gravitate to that so much because I think how amazing the, how where my life has gone since I've made different choices and taking this shift into holistic health and how people have gravitated to me and vice versa and the vibration because it goes back to vibration vibrating at a higher level to where we bring those people into our lives that we want to yeah yeah I also think when we met we were both in such um, unstable times in both our lives I was mm -hmm. literally flying out to Los Angeles like once a month 
kind of escaping my world. Mm, I remember that. Oh my gosh. Yeah. yeah. And I was meal prepping. I was running. I literally would come to daily burn with all my groceries to meal prep for people in their homes. Like, and I was doing it. It was literally the hustle of it all, but I was also escaping still. So something wasn't settled in my life. And, yeah. and I think I just took time as you did and we found ourselves and, and we're still changing, but we, we definitely were not in these, I want, I don't want to say healthy places, but we weren't stable. Um, and we were looking for things. And I think that's what resonated. That's what drew me to you is that I was like, Oh, I can see myself in her. Not everyone has it together in a good way. Like everyone looks so perfect, you know, on screen, we were both on daily burn, which is literally on TV. It's like, cool. We got the makeup, we got the good clothes, we got our hair done and no, but then you leave that set and it's like, okay, we're falling apart. Real. yeah, we're falling apart, yeah. like crying in the back, but it's fine. It was I, yeah. And I think that's what resonated. And then, you know, we were able to go on our separate journeys for like a year or two. And here we are again. Here we are. <laughs> here we are. And I'm so glad because I have missed you so much. I miss you. Yeah. And I'm just glad that we can reconnect and all that's happening is just everything that's happening is supposed to be happening. Right. I think it's going to be really exciting when this pandemic ends and we all kind of meet each other again. Like we're I'm up for that brunch. Oh, I'm, I'm in. <laughs> oh, I'm not for that brunch. And then some. We're, we, we're, we're totally too. doing that. Yeah, but yeah. we're all going to be new people, right? Like, I went into the pandemic as a pregnant person, and I'm coming out as a mom, probably of a two-year-old at this rate. Um, and, you know, it's just, I'm a new me, and I don't know who this me is, and I don't know how my friends, you know, do you get the same, do you have the same friends? Do you, do you have new friends? Like, who are we? And I think... I think it's going to be really interesting when this ends, what community we resonate with. Yeah. And I I love growth and I like change and it's sometimes it's a challenge and it's hard or it wouldn't be growth, but seeing the shifts in all of our lives and watching that of my friends Mm -hmm. uh, is really beautiful to see how different things are happening in people and seeing where it takes them and myself, Mm -hmm. you know? So before we close, what I want to do is just give you a moment to share some final thoughts with folks. Mm -hmm. You know, what would you like to share with them about the just, you know, whether it's the sound meditation or just life in general, or what would be a takeaway that Leslie would like to leave with holistically speaking listeners? I think I think something that I've learned is that we are always changing and it's scary and it's really hard. But if you embrace it and you go for that wild ride there is this beautiful thing that, you know, it's never ending, like, but you will come out of it. So all that scary, all those scary thoughts, those panic attacks, those, you know, diagnoses, like there is an end in sight and you will be better for it. And you will be a changed person and you will, you will love the person you're about to become if you just give it time and you, and the time sometimes is, it's going to be years. It could be months. You don't know, but just, just stick with it. Sticking with it and sticking with you as a friend. Yay, me too. Thank you for, thank you for being here. Thank you, thank you for, for sharing me. and, and sharing your gift. Cause you definitely have one to share, including yourself. Oh, thank you. You can learn more about Leslie and her sound meditations by visiting the links on the podcast page, but don't go anywhere just yet. You're about to experience one of Leslie's solar plexus meditations. So get comfortable because you may never leave. And if you want to learn more about how Havening can help you on your healing journey, just connect with me on my website at hillaryrusso.com slash Havening. You can also reach out to me on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and on Clubhouse at Hillary Russo. Holistically Speaking is produced by Alan Seals with music by Lip Bone Redding. And for the first time on this podcast, a very special sound meditation by Leslie McDonald. Just one more way to be kind to your mind. Enjoy.